love butterflies. Then you're going to like this video. Hey friends, I'm Maisie. And I'm Mila. So, we're working on a project right now where we are traveling all over the place and exploring some of the coolest nature-based jobs in the world. Job that any of us, including you, could choose to do when we grow up. And we gotta tell ya, there are some really cool nature-based jobs out there. Today we are exploring one that is really beautiful. Yeah, she's a beautiful. Check this out. The job we're talking about comes with an office that looks like this. Offices don't get much prettier than that. And the co-workers look like this. Cutest co-workers ever. So, let's learn about this awesome, beautiful nature job. Come along with us as we spend a day in the life of an entomologist. So what exactly is entomology? Well, the word ology means to study. And ento comes from the ancient Greek word for insects. So entomology means to study insects. And that's a really big field because there is a lot of insects in the world. So many that there are more insect species than all the other species combined. That's a lot of bugs. Most entomologists only study one or two kinds of bugs because there's just too many to focus on them all. And as you probably guessed already, the kind of entomology we're going to be exploring today specializes in one of the most beautiful bugs in the world. Butterflies! If there ever was a bug beauty pageant, butterflies would definitely win. But technically, the entomologist who studies butterflies is called a leptodopterist. But both of those words are kind of hard to say, so we would make it easier on ourselves today and call the job we're studying butterfly keeper. That's definitely easier to say. So, on to the butterfly adventure! Butterflies have definitely been one of our favorite creatures for a long time. We have a whole bunch of butterfly videos on this channel. Check them out! So, when we have the chance to spend the day in the life of a butterfly keeper, we're like, yeah, let's do it! So we hopped in the car and took a little world trip to Missouri so we can check out what it's like to work with butterflies at the Branton Butterfly Palace. We haven't even got inside, but there's a bird of fly. That's a good sign. A bird of fly waiting for us outside. We're here. Let's go see what bird of fly keepers do. We headed inside and followed the lambs up to the butterfly room. If you want to learn some cool facts about butterflies, this is a good place to do it. Did you know that there are more than 18,000 different species of butterfly in the world? For comparison, there are only 60 species of eagle. Walking into the aviary was like stepping straight into a rainforest in a faraway place. It was so nice, warm, and colorful. So right away we discovered one of the things a butterfly keeper does, they make sure the butterflies are well fed. And here they do it in a really cool way. These are butterfly feeders. The tube on the bottom is for butterfly food. And the flower is there to attract the butterflies. The cool part is that anyone who visits the butterfly palace can help feed the butterflies. The butterfly keeper makes the food and the visitors just pick one up and carry it around. The butterflies come wait to us to eat. And now we have a tip for you. 
One of the rules at any good butterfly house is that you're not allowed to grab the butterflies. That's for their safety. They're so delicate that people trying to touch them would definitely hurt or even kill them. Please don't do that. But if a butterfly chooses to land on you, that's okay. So how can we convince the butterflies to land on us? First off, these feeders do work really well. We have so many butterflies land on ours. But if you're hoping that they would land way on you, the trick is to wear colors that the butterflies like, like red, pink, and orange, the colors of the flowers they feed from. That's why we pick out these outfits. And speaking of butterfly vision, butterfly eyes are amazing. Aside from seeing bright, vibrant colors, which we humans can see too, butterflies can also see something that we can't. Ultraviolet light. So I can definitely see the bright pink on this flower, but what I can't see is this right here. Watch this. See how parts of the flower glow? And different flowers glow different colors. Butterflies can see that without the help of a UV flashlight. How cool is that? So that probably won't help you much with your outfit, but it is really cool to know. Back in the butterfly palace, we explored for a while. Then we met up with this guy. This is Matt. He's the entomologist here at the Branson Butterfly Palace. Matt has a really cool job. The first thing he showed us was something extra cool. It was the day that the new butterflies arrived at the palace. Or rather, soon to be butterflies arrived at the palace. These are Christmas. Look how pretty they look like gold. The butterfly life cycle has four stages. Egg, caterpillar, chrysalis, then adult butterfly. These are in stage three. They will soon emerge as full-grown butterflies. Notice how many different colors and shapes there are? Some are gold and shiny. Some are green like a new leaf. Or brown like an old leaf. Some are smooth. And some have spikes. Some of them even wiggle. So many differences. But if these are all butterflies, why don't they all look the same? It's because different species have different ways to avoid predators. These brown, kind of wheel-shaped chrysalis are meant to look like dried leaves so that predators don't notice them and try to eat them. That's called mimicry. They are mimicking dry leaves. And these smooth green ones are supposed to look like fresh leaves for the same reason. But what about these bright shiny ones? They won't blend into anything in nature. These butterflies use a different tactic. As caterpillars, these species eat plants that contain poison. But the poison doesn't hurt the caterpillars. They have evolved a way to take the poison and store it inside their bodies so that if a predator tries to eat them, they get a mouthful of poison. The bright and shiny colors are a warning sign, telling predators very clearly that this meal will not taste good. That is pretty cool. Now the next question, why are they arriving as crystals? That one has an easy answer. Aside from the wiggler, chrysalis don't move much, but both butterflies and caterpillars do. Why don't they just bleed and grow them here? All of the butterflies here in the palace are tropical species, and they need tropical temperatures and tropical food to grow. And caterpillars eat a lot. Caterpillars grow an insane amount. Look how much bigger this caterpillar is than the egg. And one caterpillar eats about 200 leaves before turning into a butterfly. And there are thousands of butterflies here. That is a lot of leaves. So it just makes more sense to raise the caterpillars where the food grows naturally. And there's another really cool thing about raising the caterpillars in the place where they come from. 
All the birdflies that live here come from birdfly farms in their native countries. And these farms are actually helping save the rainforest. They give local people jobs and they bring funding that is used to buy land for birdfly and wildlife centuries. So pretty much, when you come visit a birdfly place like this, you're helping save the rainforest. That's pretty cool. So all these amazing chrysalis have traveled a long way. Next, they will split their chrysalis and slide right out, expand and dry their wings, and start flying around this beautiful birdified palace. These silvery shiny chrysalis will have favorites. Those shiny ones are called Harmonia Tigling Birdflies. And after they emerge, they look like this. Pretty. Our other favorite chrysalis were these pretty golden ones. And they turned out to be from our favorite bird of light in the whole house. This species is called a paper kite. This is a grown-up paper kite. All those pretty golden chrysalis are going to turn into that. It's not as colorful as some of the other butterflies here, but they are so big and so white, and we just love them. These guys actually come from Asia, but despite that, they are a close relative to America's most famous butterfly, the monarch. And you probably guessed from the bright color of the chrysalis, that these butterflies protect themselves by being poisonous. Just like their cousins, the monarch, who eat poisonous milkweed as caterpillars. And speaking of cool butterflies, did you know that there is a butterfly with see-through wings? We have heard rumor that there were some of these see-through butterflies here, so we asked Matt to help us find some. There it is. These birdflies are called glass wing birdflies for obvious reasons. And we were so happy when Matt found one so that we could check it out. Amazing! Birdfly wings are covered in tiny colorful scales, kind of like a fish. That's where all these amazing patterns come from. But glass and birdflies have wings as clear as glass. That is so cool. And this is what their chrysalis looks like. They're shiny, which means that they're also poisonous. So there is one more thing to do once the butterflies emerge from the chrysalis. For we step into the aviary. Before we finish up here, we have one more tip and one more butterfly fact for you. Always watch your step in the birdfly house. Some of the birdflies like to rest on the ground. So a group of birds is called a flock, and a group of fish is called a school. But do you know what a group of birdflies is called? It's called either a flutter or a kaleidoscope. Those names are both pretty accurate. So this place is called the Birdfly Palace, and it definitely lives up to its name. But birdflies aren't the only creatures they have here. Now that we've seen what a day in the life of a butterfly keeper looks like, we're going to go explore the rest of this place. Come on! On the way out, they check to make sure no butterflies are trying to hitchhike a while out. As beautiful as these birdflies are, if they got out, they could become a vicious species. And we don't want that. Then it was on to the next fun thing. A 3D video about monarch butterflies. Then we went in the banyan tree adventure room. That was like exploring a jungle. So fun! Then there was a mule maze. This was my second favorite part, after the butterflies. And there is a science center with a bunch of cool reptiles. Then after we did the banyan tree room and the mirror maze a few more times, just because they're fun, it was time to head home. 
This place is so cool. And the butterfly keeper has an awesome job. Thanks for watching, everyone. Before you go, be sure to check out our other Day in the Life videos. Give us a thumbs up and subscribe. And a special thanks to the Branson Butterfly Palace for showing us what it's like to spend a day in the life of an entomologist. See you next time. Bye.